What's up guys, Justin here from TheCGEssentials.com back with a different kind of video for you today. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about why SketchUp users coming to Blender shouldn't use the new Extrude Manifold tool. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as a lot of you know, last week Blender 2.9 came out and with it came a new tool that acts a lot like the SketchUp push-pull tool called Extrude Manifold. And so what this tool does is this takes faces and it'll actually remove the orthogonal edges next to them and split other faces when you create extrusion. So in a lot of ways, this works like the SketchUp push-pull tool. Well, a lot of people, myself included, have said, well, this tool might be a great tool for new users coming from SketchUp in order to kind of get them familiar with the program. However, the more I thought about it, the more I thought this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So first of all, um, I'm talking about this mostly in an architectural workflow, but usually if you use SketchUp, what happens is you create a floor plan, right? So you create whatever this is going to be. So maybe like a 25 foot by 30 foot floor plan. You'd offset this in and then you would push pull a wall up by whatever height this is. Well, then you could use the guides function in order to rough out a door. And then you would use the push pull tool to extrude this back. And you can see how this automatically creates an opening in a wall, right? So this is kind of the fundamental thing that most new users in SketchUp learn when they're modeling things like houses and other architectural things like that. And it's actually a really good workflow. I really like it. It's easy to be precise. And this is how you would start something like this. Now, there are some things like your geometry is no longer quad geometry and other things like that um, when you do this in SketchUp. But the whole point of SketchUp is to simplify this process so you don't need to worry about that. It's supposed to be an accessible CAD modeling tool. And so what a lot of people were saying, myself included, is, well, why wouldn't you use this for new users coming over into Blender, right? And so I was kind of testing that and it really actually doesn't make any sense. So if you're a new SketchUp user and you wanted to come into Blender and use that workflow, what you would do is you would add a mesh like this. You would inset this face by a certain number of inches. And then you would extrude these faces up. So, so far that's pretty similar, right? So you'd extrude that up 120 inches. Well then though, what happens is you start running into issues. And so the reason you start running into issues is now let's say we wanted to do that same thing, right? Let's say we wanted to split this face in order to create a door. So there's a few ways you could do that. You could try using edge loops. So you could do a control R, split this and move it over and then do the same thing over here and split this right here. But the problem with that is the way that this works is these edges start coming over here because of the way this um, because of the way this creates the quads. And this is how it's supposed to create the quads so you don't run into issues, right? Now you could come in here and you could fix that. So you could um, select these edges, right? So I could select this, this, turn on snapping, and then use the edge slide tool in order to try to align these. So you could edge slide this over, you could do the same thing over here in order to kind of align those. And then you could come in here and you could use the extrude manifold tool in order to do this, right? So you could select this face, you could use extrude manifold in order to extrude this so that it's level with the back face. You could delete out this face. So you could do that inside of Blender, right? And then you could keep doing that for your windows. So I could do that over here. I could split this face, but what happens is things start getting kind of complicated, right? Because you split this up and notice how your quads have kind of been broken in here and this isn't splitting this all the way across. And then you start creating all these extra edges and you have to fix them and things just get like kind of complex, right? If you're trying to do things this way. So I could create this face and then I could extrude this across to the back face and delete this out. But then you have multiple faces because things overlap. And if I delete this out again, then you've deleted out the entire back face. It just doesn't work the same way, right? And so the reason for that is because you're trying to use a non-quad workflow in order to do this. You're trying to use all of these tools that are designed to work as quads in order to do this. And it really doesn't make any sense because there's a much easier way to do this. So let's do this again and just add a plane. 
move it over, and we won't worry too much about anything other than insetting it. But let's say we were to inset this six inches, and extrude these up to create our walls, there's really no reason that you need to split these faces at all, right? So I'm gonna extrude this up right here. There's no reason you need to extrude this up at all. The strength of Blender is the way that it works with topology um, in order to create solids and have good topology. So what you can do instead is you can just use the add-on Archimesh, which is built into Blender, or you could create your own objects as well. Just add a door. So you just create a door, you'd give it a 90 degree rotation, and then you'd move it into your wall. So we're gonna select the whole thing to do that. You just move that into your wall, and then you would just use a Boolean function in order to create an opening, right? So we'll click into this, and I may need to move this back just a little bit. So we've got our door and our wall. All you need to do is select your wall, go to your modifiers, and then under Boolean, just select the hole, right? And so what that's done is that's cut a hole in here for your door inside of your wall. And the great thing about that is that you can move it around, right? So I can move this opening in my wall anywhere that I want to. So then I could come in here and make sure that it's placed in the right location, other things like that. But this is how you would probably want to do this because then you're not worrying about splitting a whole bunch of geometry. You're not making your faces complex, anything like that. So then you could come in here and you could model out your roof however you wanted to really easily. So, and that's just one example, but I think it's a really good example of showing if you're going to move from one software to another, learn how the other program's supposed to work. So this workflow over here, absolutely fine for working in SketchUp. I actually like it better in a lot of ways um, just because it gives me a little bit more precision. It gives me a little bit more control where Blender gives me a little bit more modifiability while um, getting those exact precise measurements can be a little bit more tricky. But you don't want to bring your SketchUp workflow into Blender. You want to learn a Blender workflow that works because it can make your life a lot easier. So this is not me saying pick one over the other. This is me saying if you're going to learn how to use a program, learn how it's supposed to work and learn some of the tools that are in there instead of using new tools as a crutch in order to not learn um, the way that things are supposed to work. Because I guarantee you your life is going to be a lot easier if you start learning how things are supposed to be created in Blender if you're going to use Blender. Same thing for SketchUp, right? You're going to run into more issues with trying to do things with solid tools in SketchUp um, just because of the way that geometry is created. So I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about this. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. All I'm saying is if you're going to use Blender, you need to learn how to use Blender. If you're going to use SketchUp, then learn how to use SketchUp. So I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.